<laughs> smell of vision Oh, God, let's hope that's not the, the, the next uh, killer feature. Hello, and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 148 for Thursday, the 2nd of November, 2017. This is short two lifelong friends and their guests talk about all things geek, and we celebrate it, and we have amazing people on, and we drink, um, we drink beer. <laughs> yeah, so it's um it's it's Thursday. It is. Um it is a weekday, so of course I'm drinking. Uh, <laughs> there's no, no. no no need to drink on the weekends. You don't work those days. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Here. gosh, but we are not alone. We have a sp- very special guest from the Geek Grills podcast. We have September McGrady. Ember, what is up? All the things. I'm not at BlizzCon. <laughs> God damn it. More drinks. Yeah, that's the reason enough. <laughs> um, thank you, Stoke Squirrel, for the follow. Uh, we, uh, man, this is this is a hell of a week, dude. Like, I was, <sighs> man, I, I'm just going to get into it, okay? Halloween party on Saturday night was amazing. All day Saturday was spent slaving away, decorating the house, getting things ready. Of course, nothing, it, nothing, nothing quite uh, worked out the way it was supposed to. Sunday was hungover day. Uh, we didn't do jack damn it. Um, <laughs> the party was awesome. Not as many people showed up as what we had hoped, but as enough showed up to where we felt it was worth it. Um, <laughs> in the rest of the week, I've been developing this cough again. Apparently, it didn't quite go away enough, so now it's coming back. And now, of course, I did my pre-op yesterday, which a big fuddle fuck for all the different places I had to go to get pre-op done for a surgery that I'm really nervous about having in the first place. Right. Um, that, that was kind of, that's kind of my week in a, in a nutshell. Um, to get out of the way, because it's once again, my geeky thing of the week is the, one of those things that very few people are going to agree with, or at least understand. Okay. I took my four year old trick or treating. Uh, yeah, dude, that's out of line. Like, I don't get it. Yeah. What? Why would you do that? Yeah. What? Um, so the first couple of years, we didn't bother taking her because there's no point. Last year, we couldn't go because of in- environmental factors, and I think my knee was all jacked up at the time. Um, this year, we just went around the block, and I got to tell you, dude, sometimes the dad moments are the fucking best. Yeah, sure. Yay. <clears throat> so there's my weekend in a nutshell. Go. So wait, oh, wait, 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 hold on. What I have a question. Four-year-old dressed as? I have did questions. you dress up? What, what did what did Autumn dress as? A uh, vampire girl, because she wanted to be like her mommy, and her mommy dressed up as a vampire every year. Ah, oh, every Aww. year. That's well, her she thing. she she I got a, she bought a really nice costume one year, and like, there's no point in getting another one because it's a really nice costume. So. She okay. does that. And, did and did dad she, dress up? Uh, well, not for not for not for the trick or treating I did for the Halloween party as a as a drunken monk. <laughs> oh, right on. So I wasn't in costume until so about an hour monk. after the yeah, I wasn't in co- wasn't in costume until about an hour after the party started. <laughs> <laughs> Ember, did you did you dress up for Halloween? I did. And uh yeah. were were you a vampire? Well, sort of. I didn't dress up on Halloween because I stayed in. And got drunk with Diamond Club people and played Quiplash until dawn. There's worse things. Um, but the the Saturday before, my husband had a gig, and I dressed up for that Halloween stuff as Polgara. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, was that a was that a real word? What what was that? Polgara the Sorceress is a character from uh, the David Eddings novels, the Bulgaria trilogy and the Malorian trilogy. Oh, that sounds super nerdy. It, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I didn't even enter the contest. Like, the, my buddies in the band are like, get up here, get up here. I'm like, nobody knows who the fuck I am. Like, just me and my <laughs> husband know who I am. <laughs> Don't even. Oh, my God. This reminds me when I was, like, I think eight years old, eight or nine years old, I used to make my own my own Halloween costumes. And do either of you remember the, the movie, the, like, really shitty superhero movie called Condor Man? Like, from 1983 or something like that? Thank you, Max Trollbot, for the sub. Oh, I'm oh yeah, thanks, man. I'm I'm calling him out as I see him. Like I don't care who's talking. I'm calling it out. <laughs> now, what was your question, um, Kent? I was too busy reading. 
the awesomeness yeah, is no, on the have, have you guys seen Condor Man? Like a super old 80s movie? I, it, it, um, uh, there's something in the back of my mind saying I should say so, yes. So he's, so he's basically this, this guy that creates like a glider suit that he, like he has to flap his wings. And right, right. Like and, kinda... and he's got like a little, it's like a helmet with a beak over the top of the head. Like yeah. his entire face is under yeah, the Yeah, and it's like an orange condor, and right? red kind of get up. And I, I thought it was super awesome. I watched it like, I don't know, 30 times or something like that. So I, like that's what i'm gonna be for halloween i love condor man that made this costume is all like you know a red cape and like this you know an orange like shirt and i had a mask and all this stuff and i had three old ladies ask me when i would you know trick or treat like oh are you little red riding hood <laughs> I'm like, oh my god are you fucking serious i'm only eight i'm not saying fuck yet at that point but uh Oh my god! Yeah, I was so just embarrassed and and beside myself that they're they're calling me Little Red Riding Hood. Uh, but no, I was not when Little I was Red that Riding Hood. I used Condor to go with a different member of Kiss every year. Right. Uh, Amos <laughs> is holding up a black condor. Yeah. Comic book? No, not black condor. This yeah, is no. More I, like I white. know. I know. But this this is this is number one though. It's it's number one of <laughs> this amazing oh. series. It's number one. Was it? Was that also the last issue? Um, so, I don't know, but I got the ray on the backside of it. It, it was uh, issue number one. <laughs> like, um, um, but yeah, I was not. I was. I was not uh, any of those characters. I was not Black Condor. I was not Condor Man. I was not Little Red Riding Hood. I also have uh, Winter I, Spawn. I went as I went as Deadpool this year, uh, but I kind of went like super, uh, super basic, like total basic bitch on the on the costume. Um, you know those onesies they sell like at Walmart. You know, because so I got a union I got a, type thing. Yeah, so I got a I got a Deadpool onesie. In fact, uh, my family went out and got costumes, and I was like, "Yeah, just pick me up something like you know, super easy or whatever." Because we did like zero planning for Halloween this year, and uh, they they bring me home a, a Deadpool onesie. I was like, "Oh, cool, Deadpool, right on." So I put it on, and it's got this hood, right? But when you when you put up the hood, it's just got like Deadpool's eyes, like on your forehead, <laughs> and then I was like, "Well, this is fucking." ass like that can't <laughs> like i can't like what kind of shit so i was like all right i'm just gonna get a mask like a like a burnt face like maybe like maybe even like a freddy krueger mask or something like that and you know that way it's you know i can be like the you know deadpool with his mask off couldn't find a mask for shit went to a couple different stores couldn't find one and then uh, inspiration you, you, hit you could have just gotten like a bunch of random shit and just splatted it on your face like you know like yeah, well, see, I had to work the next morning. I didn't want to mess with, like, you know, face paint or, like, dying hair. Why do you care? Kind of you're not your damn civilian now. You can go in yeah, there I know. looking like I complete know. shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I don't, I don't really have a dress code anymore. Uh, but so I was like, all right. Um, idea. How about I go as Deadpool from the movie where at the end, when he took off his mask in front of his girlfriend for the first time, he didn't want her to see his horrid face. So what did he do? He stapled a a like a paper, you know, printed out face of Hugh Jackman. You, right. You stapled a picture of Hugh Jackman to your face. <laughs> like, Literally, like, dude, somehow that, he didn't admit quite that hard. That is fucking commitment, it dude. Out and cut out Hugh Jackman's face, and I I did staple it. In fact, but I stapled it to like a I think it was like a pizza box or something like a frozen pizza box. And then I, I basically just, you know, just made it into a mask, and that's that's what I wore. Oh, so you, I had, so like, you didn't staple it to your face. I had like four people, not even to the union suit hood, apparently. I, I know, like, so I, I'm completely disappointed now. <sighs> I had like four people, like four parents, were like, "Oh, that's badass, dude! Good job!" But all of the children that came to our door for trick or treating gave me a wide berth. Really? They just looked at me like. I mean, that's no different than when you're out of costumes, so... Uh. I, I was like, wait a minute, did I forget to put the mask on? Nope, the mask <laughs> is there. Um, yeah, Amos, I, in the show notes, I put the I put a picture of it if you want to bring it up and, and, dun, dun, dun. and show the audience, the visual audience. Um, yeah, so that was that was my Halloween. It was a, it was a pretty good time. Um, yeah, uh, so there were... This is, this, is why we, uh, this is why we have pre-show. Right. <laughs> So yeah, so for the viewers, that that was me in in the costume. And for the audio listeners, this will be in the show notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, we, can't, if oh, can't remember to put it in there. Good job. I think that's a good job. 
<laughs> oh man, but yeah, it was totally worth it for the for the four grown ups that were like, yeah, dude, very cool. Uh, so, Ember, we we talked about Halloween. Uh, what else did you find to do this week that was uh, uh, particular to your geekiness? I'm everything I did this week was so nerdy I couldn't even like <laughs> um, D and D Sunday a- nights. Right. We started streaming that again, which is really exciting. Trebizel is like trying to run the game now. Mm. Um, Trebizel is a streamer uh, from the UK. That I started following because he's a Hearthstone guy. Um, geez, I don't know, a couple years ago now, and I kind of dragged him into our D and D group, and he became so obsessed with D and D. He like bought all the books and he bought dice, and he's been playing with us for a while. And my husband's been running, and now he wanted to try to run, so he's trying to run and he's streaming it again. And so that's that's always fun. I love that. Um, did horseman runs every day. The, the horseless headsman, as we like to call him. Because um, <laughs> <laughs> that horse, I, I I don't believe it exists. It's it's an R-O-U-S. Uh, my husband's been doing that run with multiple characters mm, in okay. World of Warcraft for like eight years now. Still doesn't have it. Uh, I did finish up Stranger Things Season 2. Um, I made... So I make, and I'm going to be making a bunch of these for Christmas. I just got some new stuff for the handles. Um, I make hot cold packs. You ever have one of those hot cold packs that are like, they, they're they filled with rice? Mm-hmm. So you can oh, microwave yeah. them and use them as a hot pack, or you can put them in the freezer and use them as a cold pack. Well, my, my kids love these things. And um, I've got one, an NC State fabric one I made for my younger one, but my 16-year-old asked me for one this week. So I had this cool like Adventure Time fabric. And I made him one. <laughs> so I got some more of this handle stuff. And I think I'm going to do that for Christmas presents this year for people. I mean, oh, I've got cool. cool. I've got, I've got TARDIS very fabric. Nice. I've got Pokemon fabric. I've got My Little Pony fabric. I'm like, I make these for all my nerd friends anyway. I'd have to get oh, hell yeah. for normal. Yeah, don't, don't let my girlfriend know that, you're, that you've got the TARDIS fabric. She'll right. lose her mind. Yes, yeah, she will. Uh, it, I so got Amos... that to make a shirt. Like, my Remember... husband wears... Bowling style shirts with the stripe, you know. Mm. Oh right! So I've got like yeah. Zelda fabric and Tardis fabric. I'm trying to learn to make those. Nice, cool. Amos Ember mentioned Stranger Things too. You're caught up, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. No, um, I watched every. Um, I haven't watched any of it. Oh what? man! No, I wanted so badly to talk about, but you know what? Okay, so non spoiler, non spoiler. Okay. Um, I, you. Know, we, in my house, we we did binge it like straight through. I don't want to say one sitting, uh, but uh, with probably like two potty breaks. But, so basically, one sitting. We <laughs> binged straight through the thing on Friday night, and uh, oh my god, what a ride! Amos, I'm a little bit envious of you that you haven't watched it yet because you get to see it with fresh eyes. So, so uh, here's the thing, though. Uh, we were gonna watch it on I think Tuesday night on Halloween, and then because we thought all the trigger treating was over, and then we had this mad rush of like <laughs> a lot of people. So I actually went. Yep. To be- I went to bed early because I wasn't feeling well. And then last night we were gonna do it, and two of the kids haven't seen it, so we're like, "Well, you gotta." We, they want to watch it with us, and we're like, "Well, you gotta, you gotta watch the first part first. Like, you can't." Oh my god! Yeah, like, you gotta go. I can't imagine somebody watching season two without having seen so, season yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. So now we are, we are. I don't want to say waiting, but we're providing an opportunity for the other two to catch up so that we can all watch it together, hopefully this weekend. Right. Okay. Right on. That's, well, that's... well, this weekend's actually drill weekend, so it'll probably be next weekend. But That's barely acceptable. But... <laughs> it's, yeah, I, I know. My I know. husband and I took a few days to watch it. Yeah. Well, the first one, uh, first season, Rick and I waited forever to watch it, and finally we watched it. We watched four-hour blocks two days in a row, and we loved it. But it was just, it took us a while to find the time to start watching it. We took our time on season one because we started watching it like immediately after it came out because we, mm-hmm. we'd we heard like some good reviews saying like, oh yeah, like 80s nostalgic goodness. So like, oh, let's let's try this out. And so it was, nobody knew about it yet. So mm-hmm. we kind of, we, I think we spent a week watching it. And, uh, but we, did, we weren't going to take the risk this time because yeah. we knew that everyone <laughs> and their freaking brother were going to be talking about it. So we had to finish it immediately <laughs> yeah not so much um 
Hello. I pinpointed something this time about it that I really love about it, other than the nostalgia, because it's very much, I mean, it's my childhood. Um, yeah. Oh, in a lot yeah. of ways. Yep. And I, I like how they throw in very, like, subtle touches, like musical things. Yeah. That they choose music that is so reminiscent of, like, John Hughes films, for instance, and a yep. kiss scene yeah. or whatever. But it is the exact kind of combination of horror and sci fi that I like. Mm. Yep. Yep. And mix in the like the, the coming of age style of like say Goonies or Stand by uh, me. even you could even say E.T. Uh, yeah. The kids in E.T. and like the D.D. playing and stuff like that. Yeah. Like it's it hits oh, all the, the Goonies good. fan service line is my favorite thing. What, 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 one of the yeah. uh, one of the things that I love about the show is that it doesn't it's not just it's not just like old timey signs and and the bikes and, you know, the, the props in the show aren't just 80s style. It's also the way they're talking, the dialogue is on point for the for the time period, yeah. and yeah. the the way that they're shooting, they're not they're using current cameras, but they're still getting that old feel to it. Like they're intentionally dumbing down these these amazing cameras that they're using in order to yeah, like a, like ET that. or Stand by Me, like those kind of the way they were shot. Yeah, they, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of eye level or chest level at the kids level instead of at the adult level, so you know it's more related to the kids and at the parents. And of course, I don't know if any of this applies to season two, but I'm, I would assume it does since it's kind of the same people that are doing it. But it just the the way, oh, okay. So now that I'm now that I'm doing this other rewatch of this other show that I can't quite talk about quite yet, <laughs> I'm looking uh, yeah. at how things are produced, and camera angles are a huge part of it, and the color schemes of the background, and the way that the the gels they put on the lenses, and the way they tint it in post production, and and the lighting they use, it, it's. It's so nostalgic for the period. It's, it's it's a period piece done with current technology, intentionally dumbed down on set for the period, and then further enhanced in post production. It's fucking amazing. Right on, right on. So, um, hey, uh, real quick before we move on to anything else, I do want to mention, uh, Ember, you mentioned playing D and D, and anytime I can raise a little bit of money for some people, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. If you look over at Humble Bundle, I'm about to drop it in the uh, in the in the chat room right now, right now. There it is, right there. Um, I'm going to bring it up on screen here. There is currently an Extra Life Humble Bundle. Pay what you Ooh. want, and I know all of us have all of the fucking Pathfinder books. We all have them, but for 15 bucks, you can get them all legit. I did oh, that yeah. last time. They did this for Pathfinder. Like it even included the set with the figures and everything. Yeah. Yeah, this has got all the maps, all the all the hex maps and everything mm -hmm. else. And so fifteen more and you can fifteen or more and you can get like it's you can legit get all basically all the Pathfinder books. Um I have all the Pathfinder books. I'm gonna be doing this just to legitimize myself because well, <laughs> I take every chance I can. But and, and it's for extra life, the, the the amazing people that that we went with last year for the uh for the streamathon. So um yeah. that link's in the in the in the show notes. it's in the chat room and uh just go legit, dude. Four hundred and seventy-three dollars worth of shit for fifteen bucks. That is amazing. Um, you know what? For that price, if you don't even need it, buy it and give it to your local comic book store, man. Right. It's that's, so that yeah. somebody there will start running games who can't afford to buy all that. That is just absolutely. Even if you're amazing. if you're just a cheap ass and don't like uh, giving char <laughs> to charity, whatever, you pay fifteen bucks for that, and you can sell those things for a few bucks each. <laughs> And make money. You know what I mean? Like so. everyone, everyone should do this. It doesn't matter what kind of a and, person and you are. There's some games everyone in there too. There's there's some there's Pac Man. There's a uh, a couple other like little here Oz and Ends. Like it's just yeah, go do that. So um, yeah. okay, now yeah. we now we need to we need to talk Sorry, about uh, candy. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there were whoppers. I couldn't resist. <laughs> um, and we have a. Uh, I think we had another sub, but I, but I missed it. So that's how that works because we're awesome. Um, um yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, Max Max Trollbot. Yeah, oh, we, wait, did we already call him out? We I don't we, know. We kick at this at this game. That's what's going on. <laughs> yeah, we suck. We're new. Um, so this is actually a good time to <laughs> to mention we did achieve Twitch affiliation yes. just a couple of hours ago. Yep. Um, and that's because of you guys. Yep. Uh, you guys are absolutely badass. Chat realm. Diamond Club, um, our rando uh, watchers, our uh, our friends. Uh, big shout out to Willie Dills as well, and mm. all of the Dill holes. Um, 
man, you guys are awesome. You guys, you guys made this happen. Um, yeah, like I'm, I'm so ecstatic. We thought we were going to take like a month or two to, to reach our goal. We took a week. Uh, and that's because of you guys. And that is amazing. Um, thank you guys. It took us about, so, 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 so much. Um, sorry. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, we've got we've got music for this." Bit. Was right, that was right. that CeeLo Green? Song. What was that? <laughs> it, was, it was freaking Macklemore. I was trying to do the glorious thing from the Dills glorious, stream hype, glorious. and it pulled up the wrong damn song. It's <laughs> terrible. That's awesome. Um, I want to I want to real quick uh, while while we're plugging stuff, um, I I just want to real quick plug our Patreon Patreon dot com slash Ritual Misery. Um, check it out if you guys are already patrons um i know it's been a few weeks since you've seen any patron exclusives but get ready because you're probably going to get a flood of them very soon um yeah so check that out if you are not a patron um try us out try us out for a month and and see what you think just give a buck uh we we like to say give a fuck give a buck um if you like <laughs> our show uh go ahead and get a give a dollar you get access to all of the patreon exclusives all of the patron exclusives um, check it out. Like I said, there's a, a bunch of them are going to drop, um, you know, give us a buck for a month, get access to all the cool stuff. And then you can, you know, cancel it. The, you, you can cancel it right away and, um, we'll, we'll still get that dollar and you'll get all the good stuff. Um, right. I want so, some of that poetry. Yeah, check it out. Is, it, is it in the treasure box yet? Uh, so I'm having surgery on Monday. I'm going to be laid up for a while. So that's going to be slowly making its way into the treasure box. <laughs> I'll have shit else too. Uh, Debbie Scott is one. Thank you. Yeah, hell yeah. It's pretty bitchy. Um, very like, cool. Like yeah. I'm, I'm really uh, liking yeah, the zombie running across the screen. slash ritual misery. I'm really liking the zombie running across the screen right here. We need more zombies. <laughs> more zombies. <laughs> yes, more zombies. Um, yeah, the the all of the the cool Twitch stuff that we've got going on is um, I don't know, it, it's so new and I'm like a kid in a candy store like, "Oh, look. Look at that. That's really I... cool." I still don't like the little the little things that go across the bottom the the chat things the emo emojis and stuff like still yeah. not a fan but whatever I'll deal with it because <laughs> I, I love it. the zombie like I, I I'll trade I'll, I'll I'll easily take the uh, the little emojis for the occasional zombie that sounds that's pretty good well you can make your own emojis now right I have no idea like we're I so believe good that's this. one of the perks you get oh that's right yeah we're affiliated now we can make our own things yeah. Oh my gosh! All right, we're gonna have to look into that. Oh that's, my god! That's... <laughs> but, like, okay, so we've already got the RMP logo. Then, what, like, what do we do for like you know other stuff though? Because you know, you know what? That's that's like beer. We well, you know what we need? We need a, a beer running across the screen every time we get a, a get a sub or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> that would be absolutely awesome. Like, like maybe a porter chasing an ale. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay, um, so we should do that the other way around. Uh L Jason um hmm, hmm. Well, you know what? We we could even have a contest uh, for uh <laughs> all of our all of our viewers to try to come up with something come up with um emojis for us. We could even do some sort of a contest. Um but that would be awesome. In the meantime, that'd be great if if people had ideas and they wanted to submit something. Um podcast at ritualmisery.com would be a good place to send that stuff. Um, speaking, so speaking of, of people making things for us, I want to, this is a little bit further down the notes, but I want to, I want to bring this up. Um, so we had someone create something for us and, and put it out into the world. Um, oh, Amos, if you want to, yeah. if you want to down the, the, the yellow block down there, if you want to bring that up. So, yeah, so here, so here we go. So, so wonder mom in, uh, in Twitch chat. I uh, created this rock uh, with the RMP logo and she put it out in the world for someone to find, which I think is absolutely amazing. And like, thank you so much. Wonder mom. That is like the, that man. So cool. This is part that of is a fantastic. Game. This is part of like a rock finding game, right? Like this, like painted rock hiding game where, People will put these things out into the world and they'll hashtag it with something like, like for example, I'm in Alamogordo. So I think the hashtag for that is Alamo rocks, like hashtag Alamo rocks, uh, where, where people will, will follow that hashtag. And then they're like, Oh, I think I know where that might be. And then they'll go 
they'll go find it. It's similar to geocaching, but without the complexity of it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so this, I, I was just made aware of this probably, I don't know, six months ago, maybe. I'd never heard of it before. Uh, but my son's girlfriend does this and she's really, she's really involved with it. And it's like a big deal and not just where she's from. It's like a big deal all across the country. So I was like, oh, this is really cool. So like, you know, I'm familiar with geocaching. What is this game called? No hmm. one, no one. Kindness can rocks. Tell me. Yeah. Yeah. Like That's Ember what is the I've first seen person. On, on yeah, Ember, you're the first person to do that, it, like, but everybody, I know I've seen at least three or four, like Greensboro, Statesville. In North Carolina, they tend to use kindness rocks and yeah. And also whatever their city is that it, that the rock starts in. Literally everything I know about this game is the picture that Kent shared with me and the conversation <laughs> you two were having. So kindness <laughs> rocks, kindness rocks yeah. is probably a pretty accurate name because I know nothing about it. Hey, I'm down. I'm down with kindness rocks. Like that 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 works for me. But you know, it, it was I have a, I have a story I about get that's not so kind. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Don't worry, I, I didn't throw one at anybody. I, I have a friend who keeps finding them. Like, uh, we'll be out in town bar hopping, and she keeps finding a bunch of them. And the local little Kindness Rocks community is, like, giving her all kinds of shit on Facebook because she's just kind of hoarding them. She'll post pictures. She has, like, a whole bowl full of them on her kitchen table. She's keeping them. And you're supposed to pass it on <laughs> so that they yeah. go around. Well, and, and they're, they're like, yeah. you're not allowed to pick them up anymore, and we're watching you. <laughs> <laughs> From what I understand, like, it's cool if you find, like, one that you just fall in love with. Like, you can keep it. But it's a good idea if you, if you in turn, like, paint your own and put another one out to replace it. Mm. Um, yeah, you, no, she definitely was not collecting them. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, my gosh. But, yeah, I was just, I was just curious if, if, if Kindness Rocks is not the name of it. What would you call it? Like what, what would be the? Because I've not seen anything on the internet or anywhere else that that says that this is the official name of the thing. What would what would you call a rock that you that you paint and and put out into the world? Uh, if anybody's got any ideas, um, hit us up on Twitter. And we'll we'll post the best ones. It's it's twitter.com good. or twit. Go no no good good good. Twitter.com slash ritual misery would be our yep. Twitter on that. Um, I want to know, so we're talking about like, like, like kindness rocks, right? What would yeah. be the worst thing to find on a rock if you found one? Uh, keeping in mind that it's called a kindness rock? Yes, yes, exactly. Like what is the worst uh, kindness uh, rock you could find? Probably like a, a, a painted middle finger. <laughs> so, so, I kind of hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking like like a, a rock that's like, like oblong, you know, and it's basically painted like a a, a herpetic snatch, you know. <laughs> just a di- it's just a dick pick, like a <laughs> dick, yeah, yeah. like dick shaped rock. Uh, no, no, an actual dick pick, like like <laughs> like professionally painted onto the rock in actual size, and it's in it, it, like you know, yeah, like t- yeah, 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 yeah. With like like genital warts on the side and a big pimple on the oh, scrotum. That, yeah, that would not be very kind. I, I'm just yeah. like what or or or, or something like what about a message? Because it didn't ha- just have to be a picture, right? It can be a message, right? So what's the worst message you could find on a kindness rock? Yeah, like I I don't know, Ember. What what do you what do you think? Would you would you be Sir Liam? Thank you. you? <laughs> would what? <laughs> would you, I you like a dick pic rock? Like, Is that what hey, you're, you're asking me? <laughs> <laughs> what, what what's the worst message you could see on there? Uh, how, well, how, I heard how, how he about, had a pretty nasty one. But how, how about your mom's stones were better? <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of like a, a a lame a lame attempt at humor slash insult. <laughs> like this is like a sixth grader's attempt. Like throw this into a crowd and run. Uh, oh, like a command. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or just pass like, it on. Like leave it outside Not of a kind. store and, and instruct them to throw it through the store window. <laughs> oh jeez. Oh, oh jeez. Um Pretty yeah, bad. that's uh that's 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 bad. That's bad. And Squid07 says uh, a chocolate starfish. Um 
<laughs> yeah, that would be pretty awful. How <laughs> <laughs> they do any of these things? Children play this game, for God's sake. <laughs> well, yeah, just put out it like, I hope you have some hand sanitizer. <laughs> oh, are you wearing gloves right now? <laughs> it's like, oh God, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> like an empty syringe under it. Oh, oh, or or glue the syringe to it, to where it's like just sticking out a little bit, or just a, a condom. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 shit! Paint a paint a folded up hundred dollar bill on it, and then put the whole rock in a condom to where it looks like there's a hundred dollar bill on the rock. Like you got to reach in the condom to get the the fake hundred dollar bill. One of, one of those tr- tracks that looks oh, no. like money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Fake $100 so, bill so, rock. Somebody's going to take our ideas and actually go out into their town and do it, and then they're going to get in trouble. Yeah. Fake $100 uh, bill rock. I love it. Don't do that. Be kind. Rewind. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, uh, this shit. podcast is for comedic purposes only. Oh, this r- is Really? We're a comedy co- podcast? Well, I mean, you know, loosely, the, like the the loose definition of the word comedy, I guess. <laughs> um, hey, speaking of comedy and uh, loose definitions, I hear that one of us, uh, one of the three of us, has some shows and things that we haven't talked about. Uh, Me? Yeah. Um, well, it's not Ken. We don't care about him. He doesn't. He's not funny. <laughs> yeah. So it must be Ember. Uh, <laughs> I, I I don't. Know that I'm necessarily funny with the stuff I do, but I do have. I'm on two podcasts. One is Geek Grills. You can find that at geekgrills.com or any of those podcasting things. And also the Part Time Gamers podcast. Um, in that one, we review games. Um, Grills is hosted by women. We have a lot of really fantastic guests. Uh, Part Time Gamers very seldom has guests, but me and Zach and Sean. Um, every other week we play games and that shows on YouTube and we're not good. It's very part-time gamers cause we have full-time lives. <laughs> and then, uh, the Absolutely. other off weeks we have a podcast and both of those have Patreon hmm. ones at slash grills and ones at slash part-time gamers. I managed to bring up the grills one before, uh, before I, I got lame and forgot to bring up the other one. So it's going to be right here. <laughs> Um, it's okay. Uh, yeah, Geek Girls. Like I'm a fan of Geek Girls. It's it's a show that's actually fairly similar to what we do here on Ritual Misery. We talk about geeky stuff. Um, but yeah, like Ember pointed out, it is hosted by women, uh, which is absolutely fantastic. Well, you know I, the uh, the female version of our show used to be hosted by Jackie Hearn and Crunchy. And Crunchy, yeah, yeah. And, um, and they kind of both had lives happen, so they had to stop. Yeah, doing that, so. isn't it weird how stuff like that happens, like <laughs> real life? How like how have we not had have lives life. happen in three years? Oh wait, we have. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, we kind of. Oh, I mean, man. at the time um, that we started, the um, oh, what's the? It's back on now. It's the it, other really popular women's. It's your, shoot, it's your story. Yeah, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, um, one of the I, most popular I, yeah. uh, podcasts hosted by women because there are a lot fewer female hosts um, had gone off the air, and we kind of like. Felt like we want to fill that spot, and me and Chris and Jen were up all night drinking wine and playing games, and we all kind of wanted to podcast, but didn't really like have. I think that we gave each other the confidence of like, well, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna talk about? Like, let's just do it. Mm. Oh, that's right, because we had just beaten uh, Joss Jocelyn Moffat's Girls' Night in gaming with Dills dressed up as a woman because he was being a grill. <laughs> Ah, ah. <laughs> that's pretty great that's pretty great um oh, it was fantastic yeah, yeah, like, I, I, been listening I love to you guys i love your show uh we had we had jen on um what a uh, couple of months ago maybe it was uh, fairly recently it was and after she's fantastic right? um we ember we met you at nerdtacular and that was a an unexpected pleasure to meet you um i didn't know that you were going to be there um, and that was that was really cool. You were one of the many people that I got to meet there uh, that really enhanced my my going to Nerdtacular. It wasn't just going to see Scott Johnson and the the panels uh, they're putting on. Uh, the the thing that really made it awesome for me was meeting people. And uh, I still uh, like the fact that the first time I tried to get Kent to go to South by, he was like, ah, "I was just gonna like what meet Tom Merritt and 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 Brian and Justin." And- <laughs> 
I mean, like, are we really going to go all the way there and spend all this money to do that? And I was like, no, dude. It's like, you got to meet the other people. Like, there's so many other people that are going to be there that, are, are they streamers? No, no, no. Most of them aren't, but some of them are. And, and, but they're all just like, you just go down there and you have a good time, man. Like, let's just do all this. All those things in common. And, and yeah, in the first year yeah, we've been yeah. down there, we hardly met any. But we, I mean, we met Tom and Brian and Scott and, or not Brian, uh, Tom and Scott and, and uh, or Scott, Jesus. I'm like all hooked on the frog pants right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tom, Brian, and Justin, and, and things like that. We met Tay, and uh, we, we, I mean, we had a good time. It was, it was fun. We did a little beard thing with the Twitter and all that stuff and got a little recognition. But we yep. didn't really meet a whole lot of actual Diamond Club. We met a couple by by chance. We saw a couple names we recognized. But And then the next year, it was like, well, yeah, we're going to go. And the next year, I don't think we hardly talked to, to Brian, Justin, or Tom, or any of the big names <laughs> hardly at all. Yeah, and it was all just about all everybody else that was there, and it was just awesome. So yeah, well, Tom, so Tom wasn't at South by this year, uh, but but uh, yeah, like Brian and Justin, like it was like yeah, like oh hey, what's up, buddy? Like they they give out the you know the, the hugs and high fives and mm. crap like that. But it was like man, I was I was all about hanging with the, with you know at, everyone else there, you yeah. know uh, Travis and Bryce and um, you know just Waffle the whole crew and... that shows up there, Dark Redeemer, yeah. Um, <sighs> So good. It was yeah. really my more formal introduction to Diamond Club. I mean, I had been part of the Frog Pants, you know, just community for a while, mm -hmm. um, but didn't spend as much time with Diamond Club. I just mm -hmm. kind of watched Night Attack here and there. But yep. <laughs> your Skittles with our dinner turned out to be fantastic. I ended up first night before anything started in Nertacular hanging with Diamond Club people and, and the crossover. And that's who I ended up parting with a lot of the weekend. And you guys, the birthday thing was really funny because I was signing that card. And I'm like, I don't really know these people yet. They have no idea who I am. <laughs> but by the time the thing came around and, and you surprised him, I like I saw you have the, the card, uh, the, the print that we all signed. And I was like, cool, 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 cool. So I situated myself in a way that I could film your reaction and get that to you. Mm -hmm. And and it's. Yep. That kind of stuff is priceless from that con. Yeah. All those little definitely. stories. Yeah. Uh, it, and that's really where the, the value of those things is. It's not, it's not a monetary a business thing. It's, it's actually meeting people and being real with them and sitting down and being like, you know what? I want to find out. I really don't like this dude. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Which doesn't happen that often. It usually it's well, the other I way around. It's like, you know, I, I didn't really thing, care so for the, the stream that I saw this guy on. <laughs> <laughs> but then you get to know him and you're like, oh no, this guy's cool as shit. Yeah. You know, that, that happens way more often than, than the opposite. Mm. Well, I like was introduced to Dark Redeemer as Douche Redeemer. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so that's so yeah, a lot of people now, He's... because of Nerdtacular and because of Jin in particular, uh, a lot of people know him as that now. <laughs> yeah, Curtis and I had been friends online for like, a really long time oh my and God. he was the first person that i saw and just we just ran toward each other it was like there should have been a field of music <laughs> like, I, love you. I, I gotta yeah. tell you if i am ever on a twitter fight it's with curtis all the time oh my god right like <laughs> he, he and i like we 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 see things very similar but it but it's through different perspectives and we're both very vocal about how we see things and we're both very adamant that the other person understand our way of looking at it. And it usually takes us about three hours to get there. And the entire it's time is all... speak different languages. We do. I think we that's, do. Really, that's really the difference. So like, you guys have yeah. basically the same viewpoint on things, but way different languages. And uh, th this was a good... I thought this was a good opportunity to bring to bring out this picture uh, that, that Curtis actually printed out for us yeah. at South By this year. Because he had one of those little like USB printers that he hooked to his phone. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Look, I have some of those he gave me. I have. There you go. He was like, do you want me <laughs> oh, to yeah. print? You and Jen and Curtis and Scott. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, yeah. Like, Curtis yeah, is one of my I've, favorite. I've people. never seen Curtis fired up except when he and I are arguing about something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're and we're both and we're usually trying to fight each other over how we want to present the same idea. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <gasps> oh, oh man, I gotta uh, get into one of those conversations. Uh <laughs> yeah. The first time it was like a three hour is is after he came on the show and we sat there for like three hours and we were, oh man, it was 
Yeah. I know. W. Scott is going to be like, you were in one the other night, man. Yeah. Well, this, this last one was about Kevin Spacey's little thing. So, and right. well, by the way, I'm just going to say overall, I'm not going to get into all of the other shit. I'm just massively disappointed. Like, he's like my second favorite actor. Dude, disappointed is the, you that know, is the term. Whether uh, or not any of the shit comes out, because as of right now, there's no facts. There's just allegations, but it's just yeah. so fucking disappointing. Uh, Tom Hanks and then, and then uh, Kevin Spacey were my favorite actors. And, and hopefully Hanks just stays clean and nobody gets pissed off at him. Uh, <laughs> did you see what um, Kevin Smith did? When the Weinstein stuff came out? Mm -mm. No, I don't think I saw that. What? Several of what? his movies were produced by and with Weinstein. Yeah. And he right. yeah. has moved all the proceeds, all the royalties from all of those movies are going to like a women's charity. Wow. Forever. That's because he's and if awesome. And if Weinstein Enterprises goes under... So that that money is not coming in because the movies aren't produced and selling anymore. He's committed like I think five thousand dollars a month of his own money to it. Mm. Yeah, that's 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 is real stand up. That's uh that's good stuff. Yeah. Like, um, yeah. And, and by the way, my real problem with the whole thing. Now that we're gonna get all into it and shit. <laughs> my whole thing with it is, if you know Ke the the allegations against Kevin Spacey come out and this whole Weinstein thing comes out and there's other other people right. And then you hear all these tales of, oh, yeah, you just know in the industry, like you watch out for Spacey and you watch out for Weinstein and you warn other people. Where the yeah. fuck were you outing these people 30 fucking years ago, Angelina Jolie? You know, yeah, if, but, if this mean, is something that's... that was known, like you can't come in now and pretend to be the fucking hero saying, oh, yeah, we already knew about all this and, and uh, we warned people. Like, no, yeah. you, you don't get off like that. Like you're you are part of the cover up. And no, I, but he, but here's, I think it's here's more than a cover up. I think it's the culture, and we're in a shift now where people feel like they can speak. To me, it seems like an analogy to an abusive relationship. When you're you're being abused, and that's a concept. You just think that's the way things are. Like you you don't know if it's a parent, for instance, abusing you or a spouse. Like you've never been in another relationship. You think that's just how those relationships work. You don't, you don't know any better until you get the fuck out. Right. Right. But you don't get to play the hero either. Like you, you can play the, okay, well, yeah, we're all coming clean. This is all coming out, but you don't get to play the, oh yeah. Oh yeah. We're going to, we're going to do all this now. We're going to take well, the lead. Well, That's here's not the thing. Here's the thing. Amos. I, I don't know that anyone is actually looking for a fucking trophy. Like I, I haven't, I haven't really seen that. Maybe that's how some people take that or whatever. But, but when people come out and say like, oh yes, I also know about this and here's my, you know, I can corroborate that story. It adds validity to the allegation or to the, you know, to the situation. And I think yeah, that's fine. Sadly, I don't people think are anyone's seeing it way trophy. too often. I'm sorry. I, I spoke right over you, Ember. Can you say sorry. that again? I said, yeah, because sadly in, in the, that kind of culture, these people aren't believed that make the accusations. Yeah. Right. Yep. They need somebody to have their back. Right. Yeah. But either, either way, uh, I'll, I'll be glad when this whole, when the whole thing, like when the, when the, the, forget the pun, when the house of cards fucking collapses, because I'm ready for Hollywood just to be Hollywood again. Yeah. See, Amos is one of those, like he, he believes in the causes, but he doesn't want to go through the process. He just yeah. wants like a, a switch yeah, to be flipped. Don't tell me about the, the labor. Process. Show me the fucking baby. All right. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Unnecessary or uh, unfortunately, the, you know, these are necessary steps that have to have to happen before like the, you know, things can be cleansed yeah. or, or whatever you uh, reset button hit or whatever. Um, yeah. It, well, so, yeah. It, okay. So it's, it's just like the class war that I think is inevitable in America. I, I, I can't wait for it to start. I don't want to be part of it until it's over. Like, and I know, <laughs> I know that's a complete asshole thing for me to say, but it's going to eventually start. And once it starts, I'm be like, all right, now I'm going to run for the fucking hills while y'all figure this shit out. Cause I'm done. I'm out. I'm let me know when it's over. Let me, let me go back to my middle. So you're classroom. squeamish. Uh, it's, <laughs> I just, I, I, the, the triviality of uh, trivial, trivialness, trivial, whatever the, the minor details in between the catalyst. Minutia. And, there you go. Perfect. The minutia between the catalyst and the finalization bores me, and I want nothing to do with it. So yeah, yeah. I learned that watching reading Dragonlance, like the the initial holy shit, things are going to start, things are going to start, and then like it's like two books later, and you're like, oh fuck, come on. <laughs> <laughs>
So it's like you. So you probably don't like Tolkien books then, where Tolkien will spend literally three pages describing the foliage of oh the forest God. that they just entered. I've honestly never finished a Tolkien book. Yeah, and that's I'm I'm sure that's why. Yeah, <laughs> I've I finished one. Strangely enough, it was the Silmarillion. Oh wow! I that really like that one. The I like, only Tolkien I, book I, I I've like ever started digging and not in finished. to the world. But yeah, reading The Hobbit or you know Lord of the Rings, I just couldn't do it. It just yeah spends three pages and like it's a yeah. fucking tree. Can you take another step? It might be something else. <laughs> Yeah, I, I love those crazy. books though. I, I couldn't put any of those down. There's only one time uh, when I want you to spend more time than necessary on the detail, and that's if I'm playing in Ravenloft. <laughs> like, right. there, there's something about Ravenloft, Ravenloft is all about the detail. Yeah, there's something about Ravenloft because we we tried to run Ravenloft. Like, we we would sit there. I mean, we were in high school and we we're like, yeah, let's run Ravenloft. Or somebody'd be like, oh, I'll run Ravenloft. And we'd be like, oh, really? Yeah, good luck. Yeah, we'd be like, okay, <laughs> describe the bridge. He was like, oh, it's it's a nice long wooden bridge. It's got a little bit of an arc. It's about ten feet wide. We're like, no, you're fucking done. We're, you're out. Yep, you're done. Yeah. No, you got to describe. No, you the, didn't say shit fog. about. Yeah, yeah, you didn't say shit about the fog, about the murky water underneath. You didn't mention the wood grain. You didn't say how the fucking things were mossy in between. And, yeah, and the, how the spooky uh, sounds coming from the woods in the background. Yeah, you didn't mention none of that. You're out. Screw you. You can't, you can't <laughs> yeah. do Ravenloft. So hey, we yeah. never played Ravenloft because nobody was ever up to our standards of what we expected. Even though none of us had ever re run it either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was gonna say, it, me and you were too damn lazy to do it ourselves. Too, we we, so. had, we had artificial standards that we held everyone else to. <laughs> see, I can see that. Like, I would need that in Call of Cthulhu, because the subtleties matter when you're in freaking Lovecraft land. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, totally. it, it's, it's the same basic idea. Like, it, you you can't properly set the mood in the in the. When, when the troll comes up to the bridge, it should be already ominous. Like, you should be afraid of the bridge before the troll even shows up. And you better smell that it troll depends coming. depends how you roll, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> if you roll a one on your perception check, you're just hey, tromp, I, tromp, I, tromping up that bridge. I played the kinder half the time, so I don't want to hear it. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't afraid of anything, but I got us in trouble all the time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Oh, my goodness. Um, so Amos, I think we reached the point of the show where, um, you've got another one of those sounders to play. Do I? So here we have, um, Chris Hannibal magic performance. Yeah. So he goes by Hannibal. Mm. And I mean, uh, why, why, one of the, why one wouldn't of the you, three right? of us actually knows him in real life, so I'm gonna let that person go ahead and describe what this talk was about. Well, so he takes a stage, and uh, no, that, not you. Oh. You don't know Hannibal. Oh, wrong, wrong, I, not I, that I, that's I mean, Hannibal. Wrong Hannibal. <laughs> <laughs> Ember, tell us what what Hannibal does in this talk. Okay, so Hannibal's talk is called this strange engine. And what he's referring to is his deck of cards. He does a lot of really close up magic. I've seen his show many, many times. We become friends um, over the last few years. And he's got, he, he's not just like your average pick a card, dude. He tells a story mm. with things. He He's about spreading you know, love and, and adventure and finding your, this talk is very much about finding your gift and following your gift and letting it be part of your life and let finding out what that is and let it call to you. And this strange engine, these cards, I mean, he wanted to be a musician and he, he wasn't good at it. He took a lot of lessons. He wasn't any good at it. He tried to, he was like an accountant for a while and a lot of things he's done. And he was learning these card tricks as part of a different gig he had. Um, playing a character in some kind of show at a uh, theme park. And he's really, really good at it. Like, I have seen the same acts several times, and I'm amazed every time. But he talks about this deck of cards, and it, it is his strange engine. It has taken him around the world. It has changed his life. I mean, he went from day job to busking on the street to... He's got a column in Genie magazine. He was on the cover not long ago. That's a magazine that's been around for like 100 years or something. Um, he's moving out to L.A. Um, he just did a week at the Magic Castle. Um, it, it's a thing that has changed his life. 
Yep. He's done a couple TED Talks. <laughs> he has. He has. He did this one. And he did another one in 2016. I guess the tape got lost. Uh, that one you can find on his YouTube channel. Um, the act he did for that one that he incorporated into the talk is called Bookends. And I, I have the link. I can get it to you guys or whatever. But that one is about kind of uh, it's how did he put it? Um, put on your boots and go see what you can see. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. See, so I, I, I watched this talk and I, I really enjoyed it because Hannibal is a. Uh, he's like he seems to me like a, a natural born entertainer, like you. He's a little bit offbeat, like he's not your standard magician or your standard like stage showman um uh, he's like just half a beat off of what most people do i i can't describe it other than that just go watch this talk um but yeah <laughs> he he seems like someone that i would love hanging out with in real life because he's the one that's gonna he's gonna drop the one-liner in the middle of a serious conversation that's gonna just change the change the tone of what's going on he's just gonna make everyone laugh and smile Oh yeah, um, last year I went to see him. He was performing at the Renaissance Fair. He had a regular spot there. And his yeah, character yeah. there is Hannibal the Liar. Oh. And that snarkiness and stuff that you see a little bit of in the TED Talk, you mm. saw full blown at the Ren Fair. Oh, right like I've seen him stand up on a bench and call <laughs> out someone who was sitting in the back row facing the other way. He's like, turn around and watch the show or get out and let someone else sit down. Like, wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I like that about him. I, yeah, I would I would love to meet him somewhere, uh, maybe at a South by or something down the road. Um, but yeah, it, the the thing that he he says about the cards, uh, how the cards are his um, uh, like his. Oh, gosh, I can't even remember the words that he used, but it was basically like the cards are his almanac. It's his uh, he he worships with the cards. He like everything. The cards are his everything. And it reminds me of something that I had read when I was a kid, uh, where uh, this this guy he was basically like a um, I don't know if he was a cowboy or uh, something like he was out on the like the open range like back in the 1800s. So he was probably a cowboy, but he had a deck of cards, and he would use it for his entertainment. He would use it for his almanac because he would talk about the four you know the four suits for the four seasons, and then he would go deep deeper into what the numbers meant. Um, you, you know, the, um, um, uh, the cards also point. represented things in the Bible. Like it was like his everything. And I remember reading about that and how much like, yes, like a deck of cards can be all of those things and more. And, uh, yeah, I when, don't want to spoil when he, it, the very beginning of the talk. Yeah. The little bit there about, yeah, it can get when tell your fortune that, and take just, your fortune away. Yes. Yeah, Absolutely. Absolutely. When he invoked that, like the power of the deck of cards, I just, I was automatically like in tune with this guy. I was like, yes, I already like this. And I'm only three minutes into this talk. Um, <laughs> There's yeah, some so good, other, good if you stuff. check out his YouTube, check there is some other powerful stuff you might see. Um, I know Amanda Palmer has given him some recognition because of another show he does called The Naked Truth. Mm. That's a very shamanistic thing. We talk about it when he was on Geek Grills, and I think like, Jen almost cried. It was like there's a, a one of his acts that's not funny and not magic. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's kind of like a kind of life changing experience. You can find some recordings of online. He's a fantastic guy. I'm very fortunate and happy to have gotten to know him. I met him. I was at a burlesque show and ended up on stage. <laughs> oh, Which, oh, hey -o. Uh, this stuff happens. I mean, I'm on stage with John Paulby and <laughs> Sisters of Mercy, and I, it happens a lot. But I ended up being one of the volunteers for this magic trick. And, you know, bit by bit over the last several years, I've gotten to know him. And I love him. He's moving away, and I'm going to miss him. Oh, <laughs> uh, that, that's fantastic, though. You. Like, he's, he's going to be somebody that's, uh, you know, he's he's out there. He's obviously he's done a couple of TED Talks. He's got a YouTube channel. He's got, you know, he's out there. He's He is accessible oh, and um, seems like a really great guy. Um, this podcast is called Across the Table. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, everybody go check that out. Um, Amos, something pretty badass is going to happen tomorrow. Um, oh, I know what you're talking about, and I wish I had a sound effect for it. I wish I had a sounder. Um, <laughs> Be cool if you did. 
actually get, uh, uh, stall for a second. All right. So there's actually don't, a couple don't things reveal it yet, but up. stall. Yeah, yeah. I said so, stall. It, don't reveal it. Right. Of course. Yeah. I know. No. 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 Don't talk about it yet. Stall <laughs> so that I can reveal. Okay. So I how said stall about and not the... lose the watchers, dude? Like you got to keep talking, man. <laughs> Gosh, like can you actually say something useful for once? Um. Yeah. So I like interrupting people, and I like talking about people that interrupt people. And uh, Amos is one of those people. So I don't know if you guys know my friend Amos, but we've been doing a podcast together for a little over three years, and he really loves interrupting people. And not giving people their chance to talk about things. Uh, <laughs> That's, that was almost a good stall. You should really incorporate the guests a little more, so you're not just stalling the show, but you're also in, like you don't want to. Well, don't I'll just board. jump in and interrupt everybody and tell you. I do have another friend, Lindsay Stewart, who did a talk, and we'll maybe get together when that comes out uh, in December or after that. She's like this wonderful, tall, nerdy, nerdy woman. She made her dress for the talk out of Marvel bed sheets. And her, she plays ukulele. Okay, stop stalling. I'm ready now. Stop stalling. I'm ready. Oh, hold on, hold on. No, I want to. I want to build real quick on something that Ember had just said. What? So the talk comes out in December, and you were talking about uh, collaborating in some way so that we can publicize the talk, right? I've got the perfect way. On December 31st, which is New Year's Eve, we oh. are going to be the Diamond Club Streamathon. You're not stalling anymore. You're actually contenting. Yes, I'm contenting. <laughs> that is now a verb. It's like in, in West Virginia, the like word the mechanic best guy is a verb. Stall. I know no boy that does some mechanic. Uh, but anyhow, <laughs> we are going to be contenting on New Year's Eve. Uh, we're going to do a 27-hour stream. Uh, we are still looking for uh, some volunteers to fill the last few slots that are available, and we'd love to have you if you are a content creator, <clears throat> whether it's music, uh, talk shows, uh, game streams, whatever it is, uh, head over to ritualmisery.com slash 2017 streamathon. So 2017 streamathon, all one word. Uh, ritualmisery.com slash 2017 streamathon. Uh, get some info there. Uh, sign up. Uh, we are going to be doing this for charity. We've picked a charity uh, that has. Not been finalized yet, but we are like like ninety five percent there. We keep telling people we're gonna finalize it, and every time we we were like, oh, it's gonna be we're gonna be finalized by next week. And there's like a snag, like the stupidest shit ever. Oh, yeah. uh, we're gonna we're, well, our servers are gonna be shut down on that day. So no, or, right, or yeah. oh, well, we're just not gonna respond to your emails, or or oh yeah, but we we can't we can't do that because you're you're not a uh, uh, you're 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 a, uh, a, a, a a an adult podcast like you, you we can't have adult content oh, that like, fucking zoolander guy has a lot of nerve <laughs> like there's always right. a reason right now we're just we're just basically we need we need another week to, to finish setting it up with logos and and information and shit i think we finally we're, we're good right yeah yeah we're pretty much there um it's it right now guys i you're you're cool if i if i say the name of the yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? by all means i mean it's, it's kind of right, so 99 yeah, so guys check out uh donate life america i'm not going to link to it uh, but you can Google it. It's Donate Life America. Um, they seem to be pretty good, and they've they've got the uh, the the platform like perfectly for what we need for um, having our own team with a uh, like a collective mm. uh, charity donation to them and stuff like that. Uh, gives us a way to keep track of of uh, donors and allows us to give out prizes to like top donors and stuff like that. Yeah. It's really 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 cool. Um, check it out. If if anyone knows of a reason that we should not use, and that's why I'm calling it out right now. Yeah. If anyone knows of a reason that we should not use Donate Life America, uh, let us know. Um, let's not like shit talk in public, but but go ahead and, and send us an email, podcast at ritualmisery.com. Uh, let us know. If we don't receive any negative feedback about that, that is going to be the charity. Yep. Uh, um, but yeah, it so looks here, familiar here the, that logo. I think it might be one of the Amazon smile choices, which would be if if I'm right about that, that'd be a good way to have them vetted. Mm. Right, you know yeah. they already were. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And and the reason why we're not going with Extra Life this year is because they do the shut down their servers at midnight, like Mountain or Pacific. But we basically had like four or five hours left of fundraising ability to go for the streamathon with no place for people to. To, to give okay. yeah so it, it became kind of a downer um i don't know how many I, I don't know how much we lost on it we made 
we 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 raised two thousand dollars last year, so I don't know how much of that we could have increased, but we would rather uh, keep it going going for the for the yeah, whole time. Yeah, I want to I want to address real quick. Jackie in the chat uh, is asking about how you sign up on ritualmisery.com dot com slash twenty seventeen streamathon. There is a link. Uh, the the giant words in the toward the bottom of the page that say sign up here. I, th- I don't remember the exact text of it, but I think it says sign up here. It, that's it actually. <laughs> don't have to be condescending. She found it already. <laughs> yeah, I, but it's for everyone. Uh, uh, Jackie brought up in the chat, but that's for that's for everyone that hasn't found it yet. It's for the audio listeners, that's what you're supposed to say, dude. That's for the audio <laughs> listeners. Uh, that's what I meant. It's the same thing. Um, speaking speaking of the audio listeners, uh, the, I think the last topic we're going to talk about tonight. Uh, hopefully this works, but it goes something like this right here. Ah, that would be uh, what my ringtone might be this time tomorrow. Yes, that is uh, the new, a brand new ringtone for the iPhone 10 that uh, you, I, and my wife shall have arriving sometime tomorrow, hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. And uh, mine yeah. was in Memphis last I checked. Uh, mine was in Lexington. Both of ours were in Lexington. They they shipped separately through Anchorage to Lexington, uh, Kentucky. And then now are now shipping together from Lexington, Kentucky, back to Anchorage, because what the hell? Because China is funny. That's oh my god. That's that's weird. fantastic. That's and you ordered happens. by the same method. Yes. In fact, Great. I ordered I ordered mine first because I'm a selfish asshole, and hers just, uh, was going to be delivered first uh, until they both jumped on the same plane back up here to, to Anchorage. <laughs> that's fantastic. <laughs> it couldn't be kept apart. Oh my gosh! So next week's show, um, you know, sorry for Apple haters. We we are probably going to, you know, for better or worse, we are probably going to spend at least a few minutes discussing our well, thoughts about the iPhone. As long as my surgery goes well on uh, on Monday, I'll have that day off, so we can always do like a pre-stream stream to talk about the phones themselves, and then that way we're not oh, yeah. crowding up the show with it. Yeah, maybe we'll do that. Um, very cool. So, um, yeah, so. Ember, if people want to know more wait, about wait, you... wait, 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 wait. You said if. Okay, yeah. I bet. You're absolutely correct. Dummy. I, I don't give our audience enough credit, I guess is what it is. <laughs> Ember, all of the all of the fine folks out there that are dying to know more about you and experience the content that you put into the world, where would they go to discover that? Well, I can be found at 9 of 12. It's N I N E O F 1 2 on Twitter and Twitch. I, I My battle tag is 9 of 12, num, hashtag number, whatever, 1102. Um, geekgrills.com is where you can find that podcast. And the part time gamers can be found at caffeineinducedproductions.com. That is a beautiful name. How about you, Kent? And it, that that tripped me up for a while. I was looking for you, and I was putting the number nine mm. of T W E L V, and yeah, nothing came up. And I was like, Oh, oh and untapped. The hell am I Don't doing forget wrong? Untapped. Nine of twelve there too. Oh, um, there you go. Yeah. So if you want to follow me on Twitter, I am at R M no, underscore. No, no, no. She just mentioned her untapped name. You follow in with your untapped name, and then go to Twitter, and then kick it over to me. Then I say my Twitter, awesome. and then go to the show's Twitter. Like you gotta follow the flow of the show, man. You can't just read the notes. Um. Yeah. So apparently, I just derailed <laughs> the entire show, and I suck, and I'm gonna quit. This is my last appearance on the show. Um. But if you want to follow my future exploits, uh, <laughs> especially if it's beer related, head over to Untapped and follow Del Noche. Otherwise, follow me on Twitter at rm underscore Del Noche. Amos, where would people find you? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Way to build that shit up. <laughs> uh, you can find me on Twitter at Ethan Kane. You can find uh, the show on Twitter at Ritual Misery. You can cruise on over to RitualMisery.com, find out links to all the stuff that we're doing and uh, uh, all, all the things we're building up to and all the things we forget to mention on the show because that's how we do it. That's what we do, and, and we do it well. Yeah, um, yeah. And, of course, you can find all of our shows on our subreddit at ritualmisery.reddit.com. Comment on all the content we put out there because anything we put on our site goes over to the Reddit so you can comment on there because comments on WordPress fucking suck. Yup. And uh, I'm going to push this little button right here while I thank Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use his theme music for our show. And for Ember, for Kent, and for me, and for you, thank you for getting us affiliated. This has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. 
Yep. Bye. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>